Amen. Now, in the Old Testament, when the people recognized and knew God's presence, they blew the, the ram's horn for joy. So turn, look at somebody in a car, and blow your car horn in love. Scripture is from Ezekiel, chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and but breathe in you and you shall live. You shall know that I am So I prophesied as I had been commanded. As I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them. But there was, and skin had covered them, but there was no flesh, there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he had commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And when I open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, it's good to see so many people. I was noticing as Ted was reading that Liz over here was just leaning back, either praising God or soaking up sun. I'm not sure which she was doing. I'm excited to discover that we are a pioneer church in, in getting permission to uh, from the health department to, to be here in a parking lot church or drive-in church. Uh, I was contacted by three colleagues this week. Lord have mercy. <laughs> All right, that's a added bonus. I was contacted by three colleagues this week. One didn't know what we were doing and how we were doing it and how we were getting away with it. So I told them just reach out to the health department. Uh, this is online, Facebook Live at the church page. It'll be on my page. And uh, I'm posting midweek devotionals on, on the same Facebook pages on Harp's Lyrical Notes on YouTube. I have no idea where that name came from, but it seemed appropriate. Uh, 
If you have questions, contact church office. Uh, the phones are monitored at normal times. I don't know if it's a true story or where it came from, other, but there's a story that in South Africa some time back, there was kind of a funny situation that was taking place. Every Friday morning, the patient died in a certain bed. It didn't matter their medical condition. It didn't matter what they were. It was intensive care. But every Friday morning, the patient in that particular bed died. Well, some people thought it was something supernatural, something going on that they didn't understand. So finally, the doctors and the nurses all gathered and stood watch on Friday morning to see what happened. And it was a normal Friday morning, a beautiful Friday morning. Everything was normal. Nurses were going about their business. Doctors were going about their business. The cleaning crew came in and everything was normal on a Friday. And then they figured out the problem. The problem was the uh, cleaning crew came in and one of the cleaning, cleaning crew ladies unplugged the life support system to plug in her sweeper. That's a scary story. The problem is that story may be true. We don't know. It's kind of like right now. We got all this disinformation in the world and, and we're gripped with this fear. We don't know what's true and what isn't true. We've got information that if we shake hands with the wrong person, our life could be over. Well, maybe, probably not. I shook hands with Ike this morning when he drove by. And then when he drove off, drove off, I sanitized myself. Just to play it safe. God lives. And that's the only truth we know. 100%. What I love about scriptures is that there is a lack of disinformation in scripture. Except by those that want to manipulate and exploit people. The Bible, Holy Scripture, is not only the eternal message of God's love, how he has reached through all of our brokenness to us, but it is also practical relevance for our lives. And there's always more than one layer of meaning. Ezekiel tells us that by the Spirit of the Lord, he was taken to this valley of bones. And everybody has guesses where those bones came from of two armies fighting together and these are the people that were left behind. Or maybe symbolically it is, it is those that are lost who have not found God. Or maybe it is symbolic for us, it is those who are victims of this pandemic worldwide. Whatever the message is, it is clear that there is no flesh, the bones are dead, they are baked in the sun, they are dry. Ezekiel says they are very dry. There are no microorganisms growing here. Kind of makes you wonder, how dry are they? The question is beginning to set us up for the question, why was Ezekiel taken there? What is the point of this story? Who is Ezekiel anyway? You remember that Ezekiel is unique in the Old Testament in it, that he is a prophet of captivity. He is the prophet of, in Babylon. When, when Jerusalem had been destroyed and everybody had been carried off, they were lost. They were afraid. They didn't know how to sing the songs of the Lord in a foreign land. And Ezekiel is the prophet of that place in that time. They're remembering how Jerusalem was destroyed destroyed the devastation the famine the, the city was seized and they were without food there was all sorts of atrocities that took place everybody suffered from post-traumatic stress syndrome and they didn't know what it was everybody was shell-shocked they woke up with nightmares life as they knew it was over 
So what does it mean for us? Well, I think it means at least two things. On one level, this story is about physical reality, a physical life. That life as we know it may be over. We have to worry about life. We're sanitizing our hands. We're isolated in the bubbles of cars. And we have all these talking heads. They're the same ones that were alive back in Ezekiel's day from Babylon saying, this is too bad. We can't recover. Life is over. Woe to us. What do we do? I am sick of hearing life as we know it is over. If I was a violent person, I'd slap them. <laughs> Amen. Okay? Because every night when we go to bed, life as we know it is over, right? There's always change and something has changed and the life we knew today will be over. What are they talking about? Are we so attached to certain things and certain ways of doing it that we just give up and life as we know it is over? Maybe there's something more to it. And that takes us to, I think, the second level of meaning here. That this is about the human and divine relationship. Do we live by fear and doubt? A lack of faith in Jesus, who is the creative word? Are we so broken? Are we so addicted? Are we so unwanted? Are we... Do we think we're too old or too sick or too poor or we've lost our job that God doesn't care about us? That's a bunch of foul patties. we got to remember that this is the same God who came to flesh as one of us and went to visit a friend of his and Lazarus and Lazarus had died and they couldn't cry. God cries with us in our pain and our fear uncertainty. God is involved. So in Ezekiel, in the midst of all this, this scene of death, decay, and destruction, the Lord asks Ezekiel a powerful question, and he asks us the same time. Son, daughters, can these bones live? These remnants, these relics of life, can they live? A couple sitting in a counselor's office. Can our marriage be saved? A widow, hours after burying her spouse, wondering, can I go on? Isolated in a pandemic, how will I eat? Sick with COVID-19, will I survive? Sons, daughters, can these bones live? Can that which is dead be returned to life? Can a situation that's been written off as hopeless be recouped, revived, and resurrected? Is there any hope today? There will always be those talking heads that say, life as we know it is gone. Well, Ezekiel said, they, they, they said, our bones are dried up, our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Really? Here's God's answer to that. You shall know that I am the Lord. And when I open your graves, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I will act. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus, in a couple of weeks, we celebrate his resurrection. We're looking forward not only to Easter, but to Pentecost and the giving of the Spirit. This is a scary time. Someone coughs around you and you give them the evil eye. We feel alone. We feel isolated. But life is not over. Gary Stanley was a young boy when he returned home from school and his father told him that Waddles, his dog of six years, had been hit by a truck and killed instantly. Father and son cried as together they buried Waddles beneath an apple tree. And Stanley remembers bits and pieces of his father's advice. He said to 
understand like everything we have is on loan from God. Everything we have is on loan from God. Don't bury your heart in the grave of someone you love. I think those are good words. Don't bury your heart in a failed relationship. Don't bury your heart in your job. Don't bury your heart in hanging on to things that are only on loan from God. Don't give up living. Give yourself a chance. Give God a chance. We don't have bones that are dried up. We don't have bones that are dried up. It is time for the Spirit to blow and in Ezekiel's day to blow through us. It's blowing up here. I know that. And it's blowing to give life and hope and promise when everybody else says there isn't. And it will blow through Easter when there is resurrection. And it will blow through Maybe something that we see and do will open us up to this fresh wind and to the new life and to seeing people in a new way, to reaching out in a new way, to calling somebody that is isolated and alone in a new way. into our cars, to blow into our lives, to give us hope and promise and assurance that you are present, that there is life, that you're watching out for us, that you're strengthening us, that you are with our loved ones, that you are protecting us and leading us into something new and alive. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Take our brokenness, take our sin, and give us life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.